the errand. What's the best, best Christmas you've ever had? The next one, David said, looking up at the bricks in the arches. Stephen gave a little laugh. <laughs> Merry Christmas then. Merry Christmas, David replied, tucking his sleeping bag more tightly around himself and laying a blanket on top. If it wasn't too cold, if there wasn't too much dampness coming through the cardboard beneath him, and if the wind wasn't cutting into his face, he could usually, after a while, drift off into a kind of sleep. Tonight, though, he had a hacking cough, and every few seconds it would catch again, and he'd cough himself wide awake. He tried to focus on the clanking of the trains leaving Charing Cross, or the distant voices calling out Christmas good wishes as they left the pubs, or even the people singing along to the disco on the passing river boats. Perhaps, if things had worked out differently, he might have been one of them. First job, first Christmas party. Perhaps not. It was the night of December the 23rd, and tomorrow those revellers would be going home to families for Christmas. He thought about Liverpool and his mother. She used to look so tired, worn out by him. He could understand why. And his brother Chris, not yet 13 when David had left, would be a proper teenager by now. But then his cough erupted once more, forcing him to sit up so that the blanket and sleeping bag slipped down from his shoulders, exposing him further to the chill. He coughed so much it made his chest hot and sore. Nearby, a mobile phone began ringing. It rang for a long time, annoying him. No one answered it and finally it stopped. With his fingers now numb, he tucked himself back in and tried to settle once more. At last he slept, the best sleep in a long time. He didn't know what time it was when the phone began again, ringing until it exhausted itself and then starting once more. Swearing to himself, he sat up. The street was almost silent. Looking along the long row of other rough sleepers, he realized that the sound of the phone was coming from the other direction, beyond the arches. Pulling himself out of his sleeping bag, he wrapped the blanket around his shoulders and shuffled along the pavement. He found the phone lying by a low wall, but as he reached it, it went quiet. It was an old model, not a smartphone, not worth selling, he thought. And he was just about to power it off so that it didn't disturb him anymore when it rang again. Home came up in the display. Without thinking, he answered it. Ah, oh, hello, an elderly woman said. I think you found my phone. Seems like it, David said. I must have dropped it somewhere. Where are you? On the embankment by Charing Cross Bridge. Why did I answer it? David asked himself. Oh, you're just downstairs there, not far away. The woman said, can you bring it to me? I can't get down very easily. David looked up at the buildings around him. It's embankment mansions, a bit towards Westminster, she added. It would be most kind of you. He was silent for a moment, glancing back under the arches at the sleeping figures. One, he noticed, was wearing a Santa hat. Are you still there? She asked. A blast of wind cut into his bones. All right, then. The building looked grand, and as the old woman buzzed him in, David hung his blanket on the railings outside. In the lobby, it was warm and bright, and he couldn't avoid seeing himself in a large gilt-framed mirror on the wall. With his lank, mousy hair matted to his head, his sketch of young man's beard, hollow cheeks and pale skin, he knew that he looked terrible. His hooded top and once light-coloured coat had turned into the grime grey of the street, and his jeans, now that he'd lost weight, twisted loosely at his waist and frequently had to be hitched up. He moved his hand to his hair, but quickly re realising that it was pointless trying to make himself look any better, he headed to the lift. On the third floor, an old woman leaning on a stick opened her door as far as the train allowed. As she took in his clothes, he heard the faintest, oh, fall from her lips. At the same time, having spent so long on the pavement looking up at people, it was pleasantly unfamiliar for David to find himself peering down at someone. I'm David, he said. Margaret. He held up her phone and began to pass it through the gap in the doorway. Just a moment, she said, closing the door. Perhaps she wants me to shove the phone through the letterbox, he wondered. But then the chain was released and Margaret held the door open. He passed the phone, which she put in her cardigan pocket, thanking him. Job done, David thought. I'll be on my way. Would you like some late supper? Margaret asked. It's all right, David said. 
I just brought you the phone, that's all. But already wafting down the corridor from the kitchen was the creamy aroma of thick tomato soup. I lost my phone, I couldn't sleep, the old woman explained. I always get peckish when I'm up so late. It's no trouble, he hesitated. I'll take that as a yes then, Margaret said, and gave a little tilt of her head towards the kitchen.